Hello and welcome to season three, episode seven of the Hayden Squared talk show. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, we have been on this call for an hour and a half now. Yeah. Google's probably the gonna struggle, like suspend our account because we're just like struggle, on Google Meet way too much. The struggle is real, but we are here and we are working really hard. We have a guest for you guys this week. Say hey Brody. How's it going, guys? Um, so let's just get right into the video. So, like we said, we have a guest this week, um, Brody Light, as we all, hopefully we all know, came out with a song, Mr. Sheeran, and we're going to be talking about that, um, a little bit about himself, and some of the lyrics in the song. So, let's just get right on into this. Um, we got to get some formalities, you know, because every interview has these certain things um so some of them are like how old are you where are you from and do you have any special talents or hobbies so i am 17 years old i'm from right here in rolla missouri and um talents and hobbies i do um theater through the school i do theater through oat occasionally i'm in the band i play trumpet guitar and a couple other things and my hobbies are like gaming, singing, I'm in choir, I forgot to mention that. Um, that kind of stuff. Super nerdy, music, boring stuff. Love that. Boring is an understatement, but it'll be fun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Okay, so, like you said, you play some instruments, but what are they? Okay, let me pull the list on my phone back up because people ask me that a lot and I keep forgetting the number. So I actually play Love that there's a list. three different instruments that I can think of off the top of my head. I love that. And it's nice. piano, trumpet, baritone, cornet, flugelhorn, guitar, bass, mandolin, dulcimer, ukulele, harmonica, kazoo, recorder, drum set, cajon, djembe, stomp box. I don't know if you'd count this, but I beatbox a lot. Um, drum machine, assorted percussion toys, bass drums, tenor drums, and you always got to have more cowbell. But can you play the recorder? <laughs> I have one right over there, and I will prove it to you. So, I love that. So um, that's like the only instrument that I can play, but I have a special thing about it. I can play the recorder with my nose. <laughs> oh my okay, God. That is, that's fair. I cannot do that. But... I, I love know, that my nose listed, is kind of weird. I love that you listed kazoo, which requires humming. <laughs> right. Um, okay, on to the next question. Will there be a music video, and are there any ideas? So, there definitely is going to be a music video. Um, right now, I have a... It's going to be super, super, super simple. Um, it's kind of got... A, the song's got like a 50s kind of vibe to it, like a 50s yeah, with like a country... Or a country but um and then i wonder why people get confused when i say it's pop but anyway um <laughs> but it's so i'm thinking about soda and scoops because that's like a 50s malt shop kind of place looking yeah at yeah and i asked the owners they're okay with it we just gotta find it's a good time i'm gonna get a couple friends to play the instruments for the video and we're all just, it's basically just gonna be a performance video and then about halfway through the video I'm gonna switch and it's gonna be just me standing on the skate floor in the zone because they have um that black they have the lights that can come off on the skate floor and they have like the disco lights and everything and that's I think that'll be a really good aesthetic for the part of the song I'm wanting. That sounds Very nice. really, really good. I asked um, my friend Autumn, who can skate really well, I'm like, hey, would you mind helping me with that and doing just like circles around me with a camera? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really interesting. I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm excited. Um, so what are all of your music accounts and how did you make them? Because I know we have so, a lot. So I have one music account her major platform i had and they're all i managed to find the same at on all of them and i'm so happy but it's at brody light music i have a facebook page i have 
and Instagram. Instagram is what I post on mostly. Um, that's what I'm really focusing on right now. I have a TikTok, and I hate it, but I have a Twitter. I, I hate Twitter so much. I don't Very know why. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad someone agrees. But you can find links. I'm hoping to be able to put merch up like shirts and a uh, mask and hoodies up soon. So yeah. when that comes out, you'll be able to find it there. You can find me on any platform at Brody Light Music. And of course, and we'll have that in. But we're cheap. Yeah, we do talk about merch, and but we're cheap. And so the problem mm-hmm. is, is that like um, when you buy merch through like you know, where they'll make the t-shirts and they'll make it all for you, it'll end up costing, like, $40 a t-shirt unless you buy, like, 3000 So Correct. Um, what we're trying See, to do is we're it. trying to be, like, Mr. Krabs from Spongebob <laughs> and find try to find a way that we can be extremely cheap about it so that it's not a rip-off to us or the customer. Very right. good. I can I can hear him trying to sue you now for using his name without his permission. But <laughs> yeah. The beauty, the beauty of like the merch on my end is that my mom has a cricket and she does like she makes shirts and all that for so many people. Oh so, yeah. So we will be I, able to make it for just the price of the materials. Very cool. Oh yeah. I'm excited about that. But uh, what else? Like I was gonna say something about the music accounts. Oh yeah, you asked um how like you asked how I made them. Yeah. Um it took me all day to get them done. Like I got my track back from the court in- the studio like two full weeks ahead of when I thought I was going to get them. And um I spent an entire day bouncing between Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Oh, crap. I forgot TikTok. Had to go back the next day and make a TikTok account and just all that stuff. It was a mess. Well, and that's something that I guess I didn't really um, talk, uh, didn't put a question up for is um, like, where did you record it? You know? So um, I do a ton of recording in my room. Like literally, mm-hmm. I put three things on SoundCloud. I put a cover. I put a not. It's a my song. It's not a cover. Um, I put a version of Mr. Sheeran up there. I put um, a cover of "Someone You Loved" by Louis Capaldi, and I put <gasps> me and Jaden doing "Me Too." I heard that, and I'm like, I am doing this. But um, and then I did "Baby It's Cold Outside" with my girlfriend Jaden. You have such good taste. Oh my gosh. No. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I took down Mr. Sheeran off of SoundCloud because it's just not good quality anymore compared to this one. And um, I really need to boost my Spotify numbers more than anything. So I put it on other free platforms. And oh, yeah. um, But this one, I, um, I went to Nashville for. I oh, have – I met cousins wow. recently that I didn't know I had. And the <laughs> mom – has um the mom has full albums on itunes it's uh jessica ingram and they've got a band uh i think it's a band but i know their page is called faith and fair winds that's cool and they do like gospel music and like christian music and it's really really cool and i was like okay i've been the only singer in my family my entire life where have you guys been um so they told me about day wind studios in nashville and mom comes to me and goes, Brody, they're doing a deal right now where this great band is coming in next week and it is half the price it normally is. And it was still outrageous. It was $850. Oh my, oh my goodness. It's ridiculously expensive. And um, I went in and I t- showed them my song. And this was amazing. I One guy... The drummer listened to my song because he's friends with my cousins. But the guy, one other guy, the acoustic guitar player for the band, listened to my song like five times and wrote down this sheet of music with a ton of numbers on it. No no letters, no words, nothing. Numbers. Handed it to each of the band members. They listened to my demo. Not the actual thing I put on Soundtra- or Soundtrap, SoundCloud. They listened to the demo that didn't even have the guitar part on it. And... um. They asked like two questions. They looked at each other. All right, let's play it. Walked in there. The the piano and bass player walked in, played it once, walked out. 
they were done. They did it perfectly first try. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. Um, no. And then the guitar player, um, there were a couple riffs I wanted him to put in there. Like it was the coolest part was that guitar player didn't even get a demo track. He had nothing to go off of. And because of that, he actually added some things that I never would have thought of that I loved. But um, there was one riff in there that I wrote for the original that I didn't put on there, and he knew to do it. And I'm like, wait a freaking minute. How – what? <laughs> so um, – and then I'm like, hey, man, um, I didn't have a demo. I didn't have time. I'm so sorry, but can you do these three solos? So the guitar player stayed – and listen to what I wanted, listen to it a couple times and goes, okay, cool. And plays it. I'm like, how? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was really cool to see these like 30 year old guys listening to some 17 year old, tell them what to do. Oh yeah. Didn't even really think so, about that. But I went there Thursday. I went there Thursday. We showed up at noon and I'm thinking, okay, I'll be done by two. We didn't leave there till nine. I guess this is kind of the same thing with this podcast and how it's going so right, far. Right, <laughs> right. Well, they cut the band track first so the band can get out of there early. So everybody had to do like a scratch vocal and then they got that taken care of. So that took like four hours in the morning. And then we broke for lunch. We came back and they started doing the first girls like main vocals, which if you if anybody knows anything about like recording music vocals, it takes like 40 tries on – like five parts of the song, you know, like there are five little sections that you, you'll you spend an hour and a half on trying to get those five words. <laughs> yeah, it's so not it's so annoying. But um, so this girl takes like an hour, which is about standard. And that's really good. And all of a sudden, the guy comes out and goes, folks, uh, our audio engineer has to go home. His wife's in the hospital. He needs to go be with her. I'm like, oh, that's it. Cool. OK. So they had to call another guy in and he was an hour away. So and then I was like fourth in line that day. So there were three other songs ahead of me. So we finally left at about nine o'clock and we didn't get back until three thirty in the morning. And I had to go to school the next day. Oh and uh, so that was Thursday. And I said, so when am I going to get this back? And they say, oh, it'll be maybe three weeks, probably a little less, but maybe three weeks. I'm like, OK, OK, cool. Well, that was like the week before the snow apocalypse hit, mm -hmm. and um, it got here Monday, and I was like, "Oh my god, what!" Like it was four days after, and they sent it to me, and I, I flipped out. I was with some friends, and I, I was so happy. So that was when I realized I'm like, okay, I need to start making these accounts. I need to get this published. I need to get this out. And I set the pre-save through DistroKid and got it all figured out and got it all set up. So it was it was a lot less than I thought it would be, but that was a long day. <laughs> yeah. All right. On to our next question. How long have you been singing? Um, so we did music like in preschool, and I really enjoyed that and I sang in that. But I my first performance was um um, kindergarten talent show and mm -hmm. I did uh, some country song I don't even remember the name but uh, I got up there my parents are like oh my god what if he messes up what if he embarrassed? what if he starts crying what if I, uh... <laughs> and I'm just sitting up here like hey guys and I just said, didn't have any stage fright whatsoever and I was I look back on that now I'm like how did I manage that <laughs> so it was I've been singing for a while. I guess while. this is the first um, time I'm ever going to say this, but unrelatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very true. That, that's something that I've always been very proud of myself for is I've never been afraid to get up in front of a crowd. Very nice. Um, where does the name Mr. Sheeran come from? So... Um, I wrote this song and about um, – it was about a breakup. Like people ask me – they're like, is it a breakup song? I'm like, no, it's more of a post-breakup song because um, if you've listened to the song, it's about um, this guy who is, who is hurting over this girl and she's not hurting over him at all. 
and he doesn't know what to do. And I wrote this after I heard happier for the first time. That's why the chorus starts with, because I know she's happier. But um, I've never... Sorry, now nah, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> um, I wrote it after hearing Happier by Ed Sheeran. So my first thought was, oh. Dear Mr. Sheeran. That makes oh. a lot of sense. So the song was originally Dear Mr. Sheeran. And then I thought about it and I switched it to Mr. Sheeran because that's just a little bit shorter and a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. Next, how long did it take you to write and produce Mr. Sheeran? Right so, is not spelled correctly. <laughs> no, it is not, but it's okay. I just thought that. <laughs> just like tablets um, and talents. <laughs> you, yeah. You, hey, you <laughs> sent me the po- the slideshow earlier, and he's like, if you have any questions, let me know. So I'm looking it over, and... Um, I come across and the first slide is, uh, or one of the first slides is, what are your talents and hobbies? And I'm like, but it said, what are your tablets and hobbies? And I'm like, tablets and hobbies, wow. Tablets and hobbies. And I'm like, I'm just stupid, not understanding what they're saying. Okay, Hayden, what is this? Oh, I spelled it wrong. (laughs) I, I don't know what it is. It's just like, I'm not great at typing, but then... Sometimes I'll just get in the rhythm of it, and then I, it's just like trash the whole way through. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what I think so happened good, was that it, and read it. Is it like I, I probably had like that red squiggly line or whatever because it probably thought because I probably did spell it way wrong, and then I was just like, uh-huh. okay, it'll fix it, but it fixed <laughs> it to the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. I'm trying to think of how long it took me to write this because my thing is, it's kind of like what you just said about typing. It's you get in a groove. Like I will go months without writing a song and then write a song in less than half an hour. And it will be this like bop or banger of a song. And I'm like, oh, why can't I do that again? And then it'll be like another three months before I get that like strike of inspiration. Yeah. But um, I'd say it took me about – it took me four days to write it. I'm remembering that now because I wrote like the first verse and then I went to bed. And then the next day I wrote like the chorus. And then the next day I wrote the second verse. And then I changed because unlike most songs, the chorus for this song isn't the same both times. So I yeah. wrote the second chorus and then that was it. Okay. Um, production? I don't remember. It took all day to record it with the band. But the Mm -hmm. first time, it took me a lot longer. Um, And that was because I had to figure out – because I'm not one of these people that's organized enough to compose everything and (laughs) record it. So I had to – okay, I like this piano. Okay, I like this guitar. Never mind. That guitar doesn't go with this piano. I don't like the piano anymore. Okay, now you had to go through all that kind of stuff. Interesting. so I'd say it took me about a week to complete. Once I sat down and actually cracked down on it, I'd say it took me a week to get it like produced on my own. And then the studio took a day to record it and four days for editing, which is insane. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to go on to some a couple of lyrics that we're going to ask you about. Okay. So the first one is, so Mr. Sheeran, do you have any advice for a broken soul? So this one's really interesting because if you listen to the recording, that lyric's not in there. It's, so Mr. Sheeran, do you have any advice? Oh, Mr. Sheeran. And it goes on to the next verse. Mm -hmm. So like I said before, the way the band does it, is they cut they have you do a rough vocal and then the band plays with that that way the band is not stuck there until six at night they do their thing they the artist checks it and then they leave okay well the band said or the band played that and i completely skipped this verse like i completely skipped ahead and i'm like this is wrong what's going on oh they must have messed it up I'm, they must have read it wrong and they're like this is exactly what you have on your demo do we need to change it and i'm like yeah we'll change it thinking i'm like yeah i'm right they're wrong 
And then later, because I haven't, I hadn't read the lyrics for the song in a long time, and I was on such a high from being in that studio that it was just so, um, that I was so sidetracked I didn't notice. Well, later I'm looking at the lyrics and I'm like, "Do you have any advice for a broken?" Oh my god, I forgot about that part. <laughs> so um. I had a had a halfway panic attack in the studio, and then just um, like eventually decided to just let that lyric go instead of trying to make them edit it and fix it. So if yeah. I ever re-record this, and when I make the acoustic version, because I'm making the acoustic version on my own, um, when I make the acoustic version, I'll add this one in. But okay. I think it's just, I completely look this one over, and I thought that was really funny. Interesting. Okay. And our last question is about the final... Um, lyric, which is, so what does that say about me? And that's how the song ends. Yeah. So the whole song, like I said, is about this guy who he is not okay after this breakup. He doesn't know what he did. He doesn't know how to feel better. He doesn't know how to fix it. And she is completely fine. So he is sitting here and he's wondering. And the final two lines are... And the whole time, it's he's talking to Mr. Sheeran. He's talking, and because I know she's happier that I never cross her mind. And I did that so, like, spoken. That was weird. But, like, it's using, like, her, she. And this is the one line, because the line before it is, I know you're happier. So what does that say about me? And it's him finally admitting why this hurts so bad. It's him saying, "The you are fine. You're happy. You are better off without me. And at that point in my life, I didn't understand that it was okay for that to happen in a breakup. So my I was sitting there every night wondering, you're so much better off without me. So what does that say about me as a person? Oh, and okay. the more I thought about that, and like it's, this is years later, but um, the more I've thought about that, the more I realize that it's completely fine when one person is okay and one person's not. It doesn't mean anything bad about the person that's not, but that's what that line was about was I did not understand for the life of me how I had screwed up so bad or if I was even a good person anymore. Because oh, okay. she was so much better without me. Very and deep. I, was I will say this song is very deep and moody. Like, <laughs> little bit. It's definitely <laughs> a vibe. Definitely a vibe. Oh, thank you. Um, so, I guess now we'll move on to movie review, which is kind of different this week because usually Hayden does it, but this week um, I'm doing it. But it's kind of like. Both of it's us. kind of a shared, yeah. I'm also yeah. doing it. Yeah. Um, but it's Interstellar, which if Very you haven't cool. watched, is an amazing, amazing movie. I so, have. So I'm very you definitely get to watch movie. it more than once to pick up on everything. Yeah, but um, it's a comp- It's just there's so many intertwined things. In it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like, like you wouldn't think it could have so many things that are connected, you know. But there are. But there are. There are so I just many different this things. Like a month ago, and I still don't remember everything because there is a lot going on. Um, yeah. But I'm gonna say how it did on Rotten Tomatoes, and then tell you how they're wrong. Um. <laughs> It got a 72% with the critics, which does not make sense to me, because usually the critics eat up a good, complicated movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's still technically certified fresh. I think you have to get a 70% or above for that. Uh, but with the audience, it got an 86%, which really surprises me, because usually the audience doesn't review confusing movies as well as the critics do. So I think Rotten Tomatoes has it all wrong here. But yeah, My dad's always said that, that if, like, the critics rave about a movie, it's usually too complicated or they try to put too much into the meaning 
instead of telling the story. So it usually yeah. ends up if the critics are raving about it, it's usually an awful movie. Or if the critics what's say the this movie is... you always say, what's the movie um, that you always say is like it got an amazing score with the. Oh, um, which one is that? Um, I'm trying to think. Can't even we'll remember. Come back to it. Um, <clears throat> he's, he's mentioned it a lot of times. That's I have. Does the Lego movie get like a hundred percent or a ninety nine percent on Probably. Rotten Tomatoes? Okay, so about this movie, it is technically kind of sort of a space movie. It takes place in like a post-apocalyptic world where the world is basically covered in dust, right, Hayden? Well, yeah, it's kind of like climate change, you know, like it's like a, there's a second, you know, there's like a dust bowl that happened in like the 1930s or something. Um and it's like the same sort of thing, but worse. And there's like really bad fires and stuff. Um, and they're trying to find a way to get off of Earth, you know, and go somewhere else because they've screwed up the place that they're living in, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and so basically, like, they're all they don't have any other options. Like, all of the crops are dying. Yeah. Like, the dust has killed everything but the corn, basically. So they're basically out of options and they have no choice but to just kind of try to find out how to leave the planet. Yeah. This Question. Is... Yep. What was their reasoning for the corn surviving? I really don't know. I don't know either. I think that it was just um the corn is kind of symbolic of people living. So as the corn dies, people die, you know? And, mm -hmm. but then so at the end, I'm going to spoil it, but at the end, um, they have moved off the planet mm -hmm. and there's cornfields. And so that's supposed to like symbolize life, you know, life. Oh. Um, but they never really showed any other crops, really. Yeah, so I don't I think don't it's really necessarily about the corn. Like, it's it could just, have been any vegetable. It is about what the corn symbolizes. I guess What's so. What's your reasoning? You just can't kill that dang can of shitty corn. No, <laughs> nope, you cannot. I, I guess not. But, um... <laughs> I guess... Um, but what happens is... Is there's, like... Apparently, like, gravity anomalies. And, <laughs> um... So, the main character, um... His daughter notices like dust and the floor make certain patterns and stuff and books fall off the shelves and uh -huh. um so it's supposed to like and then they like um translate the dust that makes into the patterns into a coordinate and they go to a facility and it all transpires from there but there's a really intertwined spot where Let's not. Let's not go there because this is going to be so difficult to explain. But it's really complicated, you guys. But this, there is this scene towards the end of the movie where everything comes together, and it made me cry both times I've watched the movie. Yeah, <laughs> there's like so, it's everything just, comes together, and you figure out what's going on, what was going on with the gravity anomalies, and you figure out why the how, books were flying off the shelf. You figure so it out. Does end up making sense. Yes, you figure out why she was getting messages in the dust. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it right now. I get goosebumps okay. from a lot of things, though. So it's a because movie that you could you watch over and over. This, mm -hmm. As you we were talking about this, as someone who hasn't seen the movie, I'm starting to think like it. I'm starting to think like the director was on cocaine or something while I wrote this. The more Christopher I Nolan is definitely a very complicated director. He wrote if you've watched, he directed Tenet. I don't know if either of you have watched Tenet. I haven't watched it. Very complicated. He wrote, I don't know anything about it. He directed all three of the Dark Knight movies. Okay. He directed um, Inception. Also really good. He's... I'm going to take a risk and might sound stupid here. That's a horror movie, right? Mm. 
it could, eh, kind of. <laughs> there are scarier elements, but I wouldn't call it a horror movie. Okay, cool. But, um, it costs like $3 on YouTube to watch this. And it's worth 300 Like, I'm not gonna lie. The movie is so good. And you could watch it over and over. And there's just, like, so many new like things that you uh, could so, notice. So many moments in that movie where I wish I could have just paused it and just sat there and absorbed information. Yeah. But it's, a, it's, it's quite like, oh a... It's, gosh, this happened, this happened, this happened. What is happening? It's quite a long movie. It's almost three hours long. Yeah. Wow. But... But for how detailed and complex it is, it's kind of, like, it goes by pretty quickly. And there's so many different, um, like... I I remember three plot twists that are just absolutely jarring. Wow. Yeah, and f most good movies barely have one, so... Yeah, right. I'm just saying... They have more than one, they can't manage them correctly yeah normally normally in a movie when there's more yeah normally in the movie when there's more than one plot twist it's not a good one in this movie i recall three that jarred me to my core every single time yeah, yeah. and there's probably more that hour. there's probably more that we don't even notice you know mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the best part about these movies is you go Ooh. back and you see like hidden jokes and hidden like hidden things about the characters mm -hmm. and that's yeah. like that's what makes that's what makes a good rewatch is you get to watch new things that you never noticed before or like hidden things mm -hmm. in the background that you wouldn't think about until you rewatched it so um but like we were talking about this movie has so many twists and turns and i can't understand why like some people think it's almost too complex but what I say to that is just watch it again. Even yeah. though you might have, like, hated it the first time, because it was, like, kind of yeah. hard to stay with. Um, My brother hated it the first time and then watched it again and was totally hooked. It's almost like you have to take notes while you're watching it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, ah. it's marvelous like hayden, hayden never like... gets hayden never gives movies a 10 out of 10 but this is like um a 9.9 9 repeating is pretty, this is close to a perfect 10 i i would give this a 9.8 because even according to everywhere i've seen and that my dad has seen everything that could be proved by science in this movie was accurate. That is true. Like so, all the scientifics and the theoretics in this movie were accurate. Wow. Yeah. Um. So that's one of the big things is that like gravity changes time, and so when they go around a black mm -hmm. hole, he mm -hmm. it's like once they're near the black hole, it's like for every like hour that they're on the planet, it's like seven years on Earth. Mm -hmm. because of the gravity and the way that it changes yeah. time. I and remember seeing something about that on the trailer. You're seeing, you're seeing this water planet a lot. Probably my favorite plot twist in the entire movie takes place on that planet. Yes, definitely. It is, it is jarring. And it's the first one, too. It is jarring to the core. But anyways, I'm going to give this a 9.7. Yeah, you know, I would give it higher than that, because I just watched it a few days ago, and it was amazing. Like, unbelievably mind-boggling. I think, I think the, part of the problem for me is some moments the acting wasn't working for me. Oh, that's rough. Like, well, I, don't, yeah. like I don't think the little girl, when her dad is leaving... Possibly for her entire life, I don't think the little girl would just not say goodbye. I just don't think that makes sense. I kind of do, though, like, because the, the psychology of a child is whack. You know what I mean? I, right. Yeah, like, I get why she's angry, but she is, like, 12 years old. And if she thought about that for more than a second, she would not want him to leave without saying goodbye. Yeah. So. Well, some 12-year-old girls are angsty, and they think they're going to get back at their dad by that. Well, but, Very. like, one of her, like, main qualities was that she was really stubborn, and so, mm -hmm. like, 
That's true. She's like stepping so her to first the- thought would be her. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess we're now going to move on to a top fives with Hayden. You guys, this might be the best slide steam I've ever gotten. True. It looks really good. It's so very nice. You know, it looks um, really good. I love your guys' intro, like the music and the video. Just wanted to put that out there. Thanks, nice. Anna. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> um, top five ice cream flavors. So, in number five, we have vanilla with hot fudge. That is very important to me. The second part is very important. Because vanilla on its own is like, mm, I well, eat it. That's why they call it like the base ice cream. You know, a yeah. lot of times, like, sometimes, like, for some reason, I remember in, like, kindergarten or something, like, we made our own ice cream flavor or something. Love that. And so, like, we took ice cream and we, or maybe it was preschool, and we put, like, different flavorings in it, but it was vanilla ice cream. And so, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, the vanilla isn't very powerful. Now, yeah. I have had some vanilla ice cream that was perfect on its own, but it was just because mm-hmm. it had a very intense... Taste. It might have even had coffee flavor in it, maybe. I don't know. Interesting. It was like espresso ice cream. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So what I what I like about the hot fudge is that it contrasts the cold completely, and it's like yeah. blows yeah. your mouth off. Yeah. I I it's also don't, don't like like um, really like hard ice cream. You know, but I don't mm-hmm. like it soft and melty. But I don't I want it like. Saying, yeah. But like the hot fudge, you know, melts it a little bit. Which mm-hmm. is nice. That's why I'd almost rather like South Central over soda and scoops because like South Central has good solid ice cream. It's not hard, but it's not like mushy. Soda yeah. and scoops, if you don't eat it within five minutes, it's gonna start running. I've never had soda and scoops. I've it's had still it. Good. It it's is still good. good. It's and they have good. a lot more flavors. Like they have some really oh. interesting flavors. Like they have a rich dark chocolate flavor, and I love it. Oh, okay. Not a, not a fan of dark chocolate. I don't want to talk about it. I'm not really a fan of dark hating... chocolate either, but I like the ice cream. I really like dark chocolate, but not... Oh, you're weird. So, okay. here's the thing. Well, here's I the like... Thing. Well, the thing about dark chocolate for me is that I don't get why they can't put milk in dark chocolate. Because the difference with dark chocolate and milk chocolate is that with dark chocolate, there's no milk and less sugar. Um... But because I don't know why then they can't it becomes put... lighter chocolate, and it's well, not dark chocolate anymore. But, That's milk but thing, chocolate. <laughs> but the thing that I don't like about milk chocolate is the sweetness, and dark chocolate gets rid of that. But I like dark the milky and creaminess good. of milk chocolate. So I mm-hmm. wish they could make like a combo, Man. like a tan chocolate, let's say. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> on to my number four spot, which is yeah, kind of a placeholder. Move. It's kind of just a placeholder. My number four should probably be in my number five because I really like strawberry ice cream. Whoa, I just realized the but, ice cream on the slides are like, they look like Play-Doh. Oh my gosh, they do. It's because, do. I'm not going to lie to you, this was, this slides theme was for vegan ice cream. <laughs> oh, for real. <laughs> I mean, it was the only one I could find and it's so good though. Like, come on. It is. No wonder the colors are like hot pink. So saturated, yeah. Fuchsia. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yeah. Strawberry ice cream is kind of just a placeholder. I like strawberry ice cream. It probably should have been if I'm thinking at the time, as I am not now. <laughs> On to number three, which I really do like, cookies and cream. Mm. I am not as big of a cookies and cream person now. But that would have been my choice, my first choice every time up until like age 11. So absolutely, love. my thing is that cookies and cream, I don't like it that a lot of times like the cookie isn't like hard. You know, like an Oreo yeah. cookie is like yeah. very, like not crisp, but like solid. But yeah. the, whenever you have cookies and cream icing, it's like full apart. And so... Yeah. I like it when it's fresh, you know, like you just yeah. sprinkle some like crushed up Oreos on top of vanilla ice cream. Yeah. yeah that's the way I like cookies and cream, not with stuff See, already in it. That like makes- with anything else, I would completely agree with that. But I almost like the texture 
of just like the soft, like the Oreo being softened better in cookies and cream. And I don't know why, because normally I'm like you, I want it to be crunchy, but I don't know. I like it both ways because the thing I like about cookies and cream is that the cream from in the Oreo is almost distilled into the ice cream flavor. Yeah. Like little I've pockets never thought about of that. extra that cream. Which is, which is kind of the difference between cookies and cream and vanilla ice cream with Oreos on top. True. Okay. I don't, I've never so, thought about that. I like them both, but I really don't think they're the same thing. Okay. On to number two, we have cookie dough ice cream. Mm-hmm. Everyone else in my family would put this at number one because same. this is some exquisite stuff. Yeah, me yeah. too. I love cookie um, dough ice cream. Oftentimes, uh, my mom tells me to make uh, – no, she doesn't tell me. My mom asks me if I want to make cookies, and I make cookie dough, and then I take half the cookie dough and hide it in my fridge. Well, what we just do at my house is we make two batches of cookie dough. One see, for making, one for keeping in the fridge. I don't like to do all that. Solving story. the problem by mental math. I don't know. That, that took way too many words than you were planning, I can tell. Uh, yeah. Okay. Back to South Central. Best thi- One of the best things I've ever had there. I got a cookie cone, one scoop of cookies and cream ice cream, and one scoop of cookie dough. And it was probably the best ice cream Ooh. cone I've ever had. Because it was just unique. solid cookie all the way through. My number one, My number one placement on this list is exclusive to South Central Creamery. Exclusive. Okay. Um, on to honorable mentions. These two are in honorable mentions because they're not technically ice cream. Sherbet. It is sure. sherbet. Well. It is spelled sherbet. You can say it how you want. I don't care. But if you are spelling it with an R after the second E, you are spelling it wrong. So then where do people get sherbet? Don't even know. I am dead serious, though. Well, sherbet. I'm pretty sure that I've heard two different... That they're two technically different things because they're prepared differently, kind of like custard, like that you have on here, Cus- okay, frozen so custard and ice what cream. What I have here, what I have here, very is close, sherbet. but they're not. What I have here is sherbet. I googled the word because <laughs> sherbet. This, this is what consistently came up. Because sherbet is more ice creamy and scoopable, and sure. Mm-hmm. Bet or sherbet is more liquidy and icy. Mm. Interesting. Almost like it's soft serve, like so, soft serve and ice cream, kind of the scoopable ice cream. Yeah, thing. yeah. Okay, frozen custard, you guys. <laughs> that we spent way too much time on sherbet. <laughs> don't ever call frozen custard ice cream in front of me. I might punch you in the face. Oh, I, will. I think frozen custard is supremely better. It is. Yes. Yes, it is. I'm glad we. That's what I was gonna say. It is a perfect. It is a perfect ice cream. It is the perfect texture. You literally just said not to call it ice cream, Hayden. It, it's no. I know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not calling it ice cream. I'm calling it the perfect version of ice cream. Here's the question, though: Culver's or Andy's? Andy's. Col- well, and- I say Culver's. Andy's, 100. percent Culver's. I would rather go to Culver's than Andy's because I absolutely love their other food too. Like I'd rather go somewhere and get other food and also uh, frozen custard as dessert that I would just go get. But Andy's is exquisite. I will never turn my back on Andy's. But frozen custard is literally the perfect texture. Soft serve, too gravelly almost. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. Unless unless it's like from Majorite. Majorite has great. um, I. So I don't – never had. Fudge dip cone mm-hmm. from Made Right. You got to eat it fast. It's so good. Never had. My aunt literally has a soft serve machine. I want to meet – Like I not one of those business. dumb things that you buy from Walmart, but like a real one. That's amazing. And it's so nice. Hey, Hayden, can I come out to your aunt's place for a day or two? <laughs> <laughs> Just sure. steal, steal, some, steal some soft serve. All right. I'm curious to see what your number one is. Number one – Birthday cake ice cream. We literally just had one of those for Valentine's Day, and I don't know really why. This but we got picture it for like is half not birthday cake ice cream. That was when the snow apocalypse. Happened. FYI, this was just a gorgeous slide. 
Okay, That's Hayden, good. don't kill me, but I've never had birthday cake ice cream. I forgive you. Whoa. Thank you. I don't. Birthday cake ice cream <laughs> is like, it's like blue and white and has like, it has like cake batter scattered throughout. Mm. And the best part about that is the cake batter is frozen. So it gives you like a chewy bite. So the ice cream melts in your mouth and you're left with a tiny bit of cake batter to chew on. Oh my gosh. Damn. I'll have to get that next time I go out. I would suggest it, definitely. <laughs> but that is it for my top five ice cream flavors list. Um, beautiful slides theme. I'm complimenting myself again because I can't stop. I've Let's move it. on. Let's move on to Urban Dictionary. So Urban Dictionary this week is just very plain, simple, normal and to the point, but um, I guess we'll just get right on into it. Fauci. A unit of length, equivalent to six feet. Originated during the COVID-19 virus when Dr. Anthony Fauci recommended a safe distance of six feet apart to curb the spread of the virus. The example is, hey, want to take this off of Bumble.com and meet up this week? Yeah, I'm down. I want to keep it socially distant, though. Maybe in the park, approximately one Fauci apart. Love that. In, like, the hallways at, like, lunch and stuff, they should have Fauci's. You know, whenever they, <laughs> whenever the, it was, like, um, hybrid, they should have had, like, Fauci distance instead of six feet. Because Fauci sounds so much better, you know? Definitely. What I really want to see is, you know how they put those, like, uh, laminated, like, uh, cutout people in, like, the library seats? Oh, yes. yeah. I want, I want to see, like, mixes of Fauci's and, like, the Bernie Sander meme now. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Please. <sighs> I need to talk to the librarians about that. I've literally been to the library never. <laughs> I've only been there <laughs> once whenever we did the, um, what was Scheduling. it? No, not the scheduling. The um, the we did it? some essay thing, and oh, we had to go the there. Worst. That was the worst. That was the poetry terrible. jam? Question mark. Huh? Never mind. Thinking of something different. You're nope. Never mind. Okay. On well, the next definition, which is my favorite one. <laughs> gambling, the I surest way of getting oh, nothing from something. <laughs> Somehow, I lost all my cash and gambling on the internet. I love that. Getting nothing oh, from Lord. something. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. The surest way of getting nothing from something. You're getting something, but the only thing you're getting is debt. Yes, that is so right. So true. And Hayden's going to do this one because it's too long <laughs> and too <laughs> thought out for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like an inside joke, kind of. Any high school... Oh, theater kid. Any high school age kid <laughs> who is involved with drama and or theater at their high school. A true theater kid will fit any of the following criteria. I did have to remove two, just FYI. Hangs out around the auditorium slash choir room slash band slash drama room in school. Wears a shirt advertising their next production. Has an abnormal amount of inside jokes with other theater kids. Spells theater, T-H-E-A-T-R-E. Now, I don't know if everyone does this, but I definitely do. I do whenever yeah. I refer to, um, like, drama I, and, like, productions. But, like, I going to the theater. I always spell theater, theatra. Well, like there, if, there is the difference. If I go to the movie theater... Yes. It's technically a viewing theater, which is a completely different definition. Well, yeah. well, well. Even though it's close. A movie theater is ER. A play theater or like an opera theater. I don't know about opera action, I say, but like a play theater is RE. 110%. I think RE looks better, so I'm going to spell it that it way. It does look yeah, way better. It looks fancy. It's, it's, it's symmetrical whenever it has the E at the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Other things about theater kids. Drink some form of caffeine compulsively. At school at odd times, a.k.a. late after school, weekends, early mornings. Has no sense of awkward boundaries around fellow theater kids. 
too close to their theater advisor, in choir or band, loves to perform to a fault. Why do you think I have this stupid show, you guys? <laughs> Oops. Whoops. Stupid anyway. since when? <laughs> since when is yeah. this stupid? We We've Being been... on a call for for almost three hours, that's not stupid. <laughs> yeah, we definitely didn't start this at like 7.30 and it's 9.46. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <sighs> Compose yourself. <laughs> on to the next definition, Hayden. So our next word came from Hayden dropping everything <laughs> and ruining everything. <laughs> and, and, what, and what did you say? What was your quote? I said, wait. Oh, was you it, said, I just broke everything. Oh my god, I just broke everything, yeah. That's my quote. When one's thoughts or appearance are in a state of disarray, but they maintain an undeniable attractiveness or beauty. Although Nicole had just awakened, her boyfriend thought she was stunning. She was a hot mess. <laughs> and then I told them, oh my gosh, I'm a hot mess all the time. <laughs> And I stand by that. Well then, Hayden. So Thanks. that's the end of um, an urban dictionary. And we'll move on to random tidbits. Our final segment for today. Oh my gosh. Some of the pictures look really lopsided. It'll be okay. <laughs> National Days, March 1st. National Dad Gum That's Good Day. I love that. National Fruit Compote Day. Wait, what's a compote? Similar I feel dumb. to it's like a liquidier, I think, version of a jam or a jelly. Hayden, I'm glad you said something because I didn't know either. Well, but I feel like jam is more solid than jelly. Well, then no, jelly just, is definitely more solid. No, jelly is more solid, but it's a liquidier version of both of them. A compote is something well, you like make on a stove, and it stays pretty liquidy. Then what's a preserve? It's almost like a, a <laughs> preserve. Is, I don't, guys, I don't know. Oh my god. You're that was to be perfectly the perfect time. Come on. Okay, next thing National Horse Protection Day, National Minnesota Day. Something funny about National Minnesota Day is last time I used this slide theme, it was National Tennessee Day. Just wanted to say that. National Peanut Butter Lovers Day, National Pig Day, National Self Injury Awareness Day. <sighs> National Pig Day. <laughs> Look at the pig. I love it. <laughs> um, and then I really just don't like peanut butter. Is there a National Peanut Butter Haters Day? And then just zip it. <laughs> zip it and move like, on. Like, I don't hate it, but I just As, don't like it. Okay. Hayden looks over in drama every day and has to see me dip my apples in peanut butter because I eat so I true. eat third hour and fifth hour. So he looks over and sees me dipping apples in peanut butter. So and then... Not five minutes later, I go on Oreos and I dip my Oreos in peanut butter because it's amazing. Mm -mm -mm. That sounds good. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Famous birthdays. I love you, Paul Hollywood. <laughs> I don't know who... Whoa, his face looks familiar, but I don't know who Paul Hollywood is. He's the guy from the, the British baking show. Oh, that's why his face looks familiar. He is my favorite person in the world, because he's so mean. Since when does Justin Bieber have a mustache? I don't know, but it's... Very it, recently, and it, it looks look awful. really gross. He looks really gross. He should he's dye awful. that platinum blonde, too. <laughs> and his eyebrows. <laughs> that would look so special. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Florida man. I'm proud of this Florida man. Florida man for March 1st. Florida man ends police standoff for a slice of pizza. I would be the same person as that Florida man. If they offered me a slice of pizza, I would drop on the ground. Be like, you got but me. Did, but the question is, did he get the slice of pizza? Oh my gosh. How do I not know this? And the question is, what kind of slice of pizza was it? Because like... Cheese I might not drop for, but like a good meat matter. lovers, that get me down. That really matters. That doesn't matter. And was it and did they promise like one of those dumb, um, terrible like frozen pizzas or like a nice <laughs> quality slice of Alex's? 
Let me just say, if they offered me a veggie pizza, I might charge at them. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, veggie like, pizza, we'll though, but with pizza. a little bit of, like, something. Here, we have a nice slice of pizza, and we put olives and peppers on it. Well, I like olives and peppers and stuff on it, but with, like, a little bit of, like, some sort of meat on it. Yeah, it, that's okay. That's called supreme. But a veggie yeah. is unacceptable. Okay. I really Real love question. onion on my pizza. Interesting. Just saying. I don't like onion on my pizza. I love Real onion question. all around. Go ahead, Brody. Does pineapple belong on pizza or no? Yes, it does. I've gotten <laughs> called out for this so many times. So my answer is maybe. <laughs> The answer is no. In the video right there. Okay. No, well, I, I just it. don't know. I kind of I I like it, but sometimes it's just not well executed. The I got to say it's a no for me because the answer is I, yes. And I tried it one night. Like, you know how when you're so hungry, someone and someone's like, "Oh, you're hungry? Here, have this food." And you don't really know if you like that food or you don't like that food, but you're hungry just enough for you to try it anyway. Just eat it, you know? No, like, I tried it, and I'm like, okay, this isn't bad because it adds a sweet element. And then one of them juiced in my mouth, and I'm like, nope, I'm, I'm not hungry That anymore. is the best part. That is the worst 100%. part. Well, I like it I'm whenever not- – I like acid in my food a lot, so <laughs> – <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> Just thinking of Hayden pouring acid in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Pours orange juice onto his mac and cheese or something. <laughs> I've gone insane. I gotta get the, like, what is it, vitamin D or vitamin C? This yeah, has vitamin C. This has to stop. <sighs> but, okay, so my what? problem with, like, pineapple and pizza is that sometimes it makes it really, really like soggy and wet but yeah. if it's well executed this it can be amazing see <laughs> if it was dried pineapple like that had been like not juiced but like pineapple that was like not love you guys see you next time <laughs> hayden stop <Bye-bye. laughs> okay as much as i would love to argue about pineapple on pizza i have drank in a bottle of power drink it. and a full bottle drink it. That sounds like <laughs> my typing English. Guys, this is an hour long episode. I'm so proud of it. It's not yeah, it's- an hour long yet. <clears throat> we have one more minute of time to kill. One more okay. okay. You guys you guys, what do you want us to talk about? You can't tell us that. Um I know let- exactly what I can talk about because we were just because I was just talking about it with Megan at lunch the other day. Well, the problem is you have to cut it off at exactly an hour, okay? Okay. So we'll get it out really fast. The- when we were in sixth or seventh grade or yes, yeah, seventh and eighth grade at the junior high, we would always I would always bring like a baby bell and um one of those cosmic brownies and we would always like <laughs> Yes, take off yes, little yes. bites and give it to everyone at the table and we'd like pass it around mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and i'm mm-hmm. just realizing how disgusting that is <laughs> oh no it's like oh, it's not that gross yeah like 15 person. seconds because of the intro it's not that gross if one person breaks it up and hands it to everyone actually we don't it's not like we have to like go that. over though because Oh, we the paused it because we the paused, we paused, and we did. Um, we you know we have that block of time after the intro, so we got to go over. You guys were killing time. <laughs> um. Oh, here's a good thing. A um, good thing. Let's a hear very it. good thing. So, um, <laughs> we. <laughs> This is something that we've never talked about. Scared of what you're about to do. So <laughs> Caroline Consta- Consnar, Cons- she uh, has a few of these amazing videos that will be linked in the description, and you must watch them because they're just amazing. STD song. One's STD the song. STD song that should be shown it's in prom. every high school classroom, and multiple times, namely health class. Mainly let all me, of the classes. Everything. Let me just let me just sing you the chords. AIDS, herpes, gonorrhea, scabies, and crabs. HPV, HIV, 
spooky vaginosis sitting with your naked bod is evil and atrocious and that's where we wrap up my friends yep okay it's an amazing song you amazing. have to literally i'm currently I, I think that's a good note to end it on <laughs> yes i'm on the verge of tears because i'm dying <laughs> this is really good you guys this is good Okay. Yeah. Well, everybody, this has been an amazing video, and like we said, all the timestamps will be in the description and um, Brody's like link tree, so we can have all of his like stuff where you can stream his songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll just call it stuff and things. Um, All of that kind of stuff will be in the description. So have fun with that. (laughs) Thanks for watching. Wait, no, wait. Thanks for having me, guys. If you just listen to us killing time, uh, hit me up because you're my new best friend, and that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And-